this is, it looks like two inch, I think it's two inch. Uh, rigid insulation, which is rigid meaning that's very, very hard to squish. And I believe, don't quote me on this, but I, I believe the pounds per square inch that this can handle is roughly around 50. Uh, and I think the concrete uh, comes in somewhere around 10, so we have plenty uh, that this isn't going to get squished when the concrete gets poured on there because the concrete, you know, will spread out over it. Now, hopefully those numbers are somewhat close. I'm sure somebody will fact check me to make sure exactly what it is, but the gist that I'm trying to get you to understand is that this will not get crushed with the concrete on top of it. So, all these pieces will be laid flat. They'll cut around all the corners, and then the wire mesh will go on top of this. Radiant floor heating will go around it, and then the concrete will be poured through it. So the concrete will actually sit on top of this. And that makes an insulated floor. So i got insulated walls and insulated floor. So we don't have any heat loss with the radiant floor heating down into the ground. You guys put up the lines that go across, zigzag across there. I don't know if you can see them in the camera there. But what they'll do is they'll go around and measure to make sure that the floor is level. We don't have any high spots because that'd make our concrete thinner um, and make sure that as we they go around and compact it that we're still within the tolerances so that our concrete um, will have the correct thickness all the way around. Looks like we're going to have no problem meeting our deadline for tomorrow. Um, it's just after lunch and they already have the insulation, half of it laid. And then they will roll out this metal, which is, it's like a wire metal. Let me get down here for you so you can see it. And it's about a six by six square. And then they'll roll it out and then that's what the rebar, not rebar, I'm sorry the radiant floor heating will attach to. Tomorrow is going to be our big concrete pour, and uh, it's going to be a special pour because we're going to have a color added to it. It's going to be kind of a tan beige color. Um, can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but uh, we'll start bright and early. It's supposed to start at seven and take two hours. So we'll see if uh, David pulls off like he did last time and hit it right on the money. So. Talk to you guys tomorrow. This area is going to be the utility room, so we're not. There's no need to have radiant floor heating in there. All the piping will come, as we sp spoke yesterday, it will come on that back wall. And so, as you can think, here's a doorway, and so the piping will go through the actual doorway opening versus the actual wall the reason we don't put any radiant floor heating under the actual wall is that when you put the wall down when we put those two by fours down that you actually will anchor that two by four wall down into the concrete and man you'd hate to hit one of these pipes and start leaking the fluid into your concrete so that's very important if you do radiant floor heating that <clears throat> All the walls are done. You can't make any changes afterwards because if you hit one of these pipes and you've sprung a leak, then you got to cut out your floor. Kind of, re kind of uh, defeats the whole purpose of having a finished concrete floor 
with that. Right, so David is going to give us a little bit of a rundown exactly when we start pouring, how the, when the concrete hits here, what is it that they do? So David, you want to walk us through a little bit? Well, we want the... We want the metal, the reinforcing metal, and the and the radiant tube to be as close to the middle of the as the concrete of the concrete as we can possibly get it. And so as he's pumping, he'll kind of throw the, the the concrete out, and the guys will grab the the metal with their come alongs and pull it up over the concrete. So then they actually they actually pull it up yeah. a little bit so that it fits in the and actual the, what four inch. Right. Four. It, okay. It's four inch uh, slab, so we want that to be as close to two inches as we can. Uh huh. And uh, that way, it'll it'll all stay up in the middle of the concrete instead of just being all the way down on the bottom. Okay. Well, this looks great. You oh, guys wow. can see. Sorry, I'm probably making so much noise stepping on this. There's the radiant floor heating. We are going to have three zones. So we will have a zone over there, a zone over here, and one last zone here. We chose, we don't need a zone in the utility room because, I mean, it's, it's a utility room. I don't know. It's really not needed. Um, the fact that I might be barefoot in the utility room, probably not going to happen that much. Today, as you can tell, is going to be a gorgeous day. So, high of maybe 65 and sun. But the next three days, starting on like Friday, tomorrow will be Friday. So like tomorrow morning, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is supposed to rain the whole time. So we can get poured this morning. We have the whole day to set up where it gets hard enough that the water does you know, any water on it is not going to affect it. It's going to be primo. So we needed to pour today. Otherwise, it would be like next, probably Wednesday to get the pump truck scheduled because he's already you know booked out for other jobs to get them lined up our concrete trucks lined up to get our finished guys lined up i mean there's a lot of moving parts for this flat work because it's going to be a finished floor so we're beginning to have a parking lot we got some uh we got a lot of big players here today the uh the finishing guys that do the flat work have just arrived, so they're going to start offloading their equipment, which are some power trowels, which go in a circle. And we have some other trowels that kind of have a vibrate to it, so they smooth it out. There is one they just offloaded, which will be down here, right there. This gentleman takes really good care of his equipment as well. I know I kind of harp on it, but this one's done. How many floors you done with this one? Do you say 20? Probably somewhere around 20 or 30. Somewhere between there. <laughs> it don't look like it's brand new. That's yeah. wonderful. It just shows you how good these guys at their, at the, they are at their craft. That they take good care of the equipment, which they know it's not going to fail on them. But the other one, your end product is good because you don't have any build up anywhere that might leave a mark in the circle. So go over with this this trowel that Doug has in his state. I see a little motor on it and what does that do? Well this is a power trowel and it it gets the concrete completely level as it's being poured and it's just got a little vibrator on it. You can see that pedestal that's yeah. that's right up and down? Yeah. What it does is the motor is going up and down and there's I guess there's a little piston in it or something but it actually vibrates that whole trowel up and down so that it, you can pull the concrete along and it levels it out and knocks the, the aggregate down just a little bit uh -huh. and uh, <clears throat> gets it to where everything is flat and then as it sets up then they bring in the hand trowel the hand trowel so the, uh, to finish it out. And, and explain to us the the dowels that are in there. Those are called grade stakes. Okay. And so if you can see all the way against the wall, can you see the blue line? Yeah. Okay. So that's that's going to be the grade of the concrete. Okay. And then there's one on this wall too. Sure. That grade stake is at the same see height. I, see if I can zoom up on it. Go ahead. So that grade stake is at the same height as the blue line. So there's a grade stake. Another grade stake, yeah, and then there's another grade stake, yeah. So he'll just he'll pull down the wall to that grade stake, he'll kind of go back and forth and back and forth to get a nice level from, uh, from wall to wall, okay.
this is going to be awesome. This is going to be neat to watch. And as he as he gets that side finished and pulls here and gets this side finished, he'll take that great stake out, this great stake out, put it on the other side of the wall, do the same thing over there. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, I know you're going to get busy here, so thanks yeah. for stopping and uh, walking us through how this works. So. All right. I'm going to take a little walk through with the pump truck again, just in case any of you guys missed it from the uh, wall pour. Uh, Rose Concrete Pumping and uh, John's the ball. This guy is impressive to watch. So we'll watch and see what he is now prepping and what we're doing here. So John, what are you working on this morning? Oh, just getting set up. Uh, because we got to go up and over walls, I'm putting on what we call an air cuff. Okay. It'll squeeze that hose and stop the flow of concrete less mass so we can jump from wall to wall and over. So we don't have all of that the gravity. Exactly. The gravity. Okay. Yeah. The pump That's... shuts everything off. Them. You've got 50 foot of pipe going to gravity. That's a lot of. That's a lot of yeah, concrete yes. still coming out. Yep. You're like, ah, I don't want yep. any more. So this will take some of the guesswork out of it as soon as I shut the pump off and apply that hose. Save, save, 40 yard of concrete from. Have to shovel out or rake out or something. Okay, we'll we'll good. I'll, I'll let you get back. I mean, this thing's like five years old, and there's not a splatter of concrete on it anywhere. And that's uh, that's impressive to see. It's really neat, and uh, it's nice having guys that take such good care of their equipment. You know, it's not going to break down, and we're in our critical moment when we have wet concrete getting ready to show up. Thank you guys for coming out. <laughs> this is going to go fast, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. Wow. John, you weren't kidding when you said that you could, un that you could unload a truck in like 15 minutes. I can I can see now why you could just like very yeah eight yards in three and a half minutes. <laughs> That's a whole drive. Yeah. Tomorrow will be like that. I've got an eight inch floor to do. Really? What's so neat is that he just runs it with his little remote control. We're standing up here on top, and he can move the boom around. See here, they're going to grab it and grab that rebar, spray some on, and he'll grab it. See how he pulls it up. truck number two which is our second truck and uh, it was pretty quick our first one went pretty quick I'll show you the progress so far so we have it they have it smoothed out we start letting it set up a little bit so that they can uh, put the power trowel on it they got it about halfway And we'll start pouring over here next. Well, it took about 45 minutes to put our floor in. Now I'll show you what it looks like. So, 
right now they're letting it set up a little bit harder and they're gonna come back and start screeding it smoothing it out a little bit more and a little bit more this is the color so evidently he said it's gonna turn a much lighter brown it's like it looks pretty good anyway right now all the guys are taking a break just enjoying the nice weather and uh, wait just a little bit longer and we'll start smoothing it out even more.